So before we get into today's episode, I just want to let you know that this week I'm opening up enrollment for my signature program, the Online Summit Program. Specifically, I'm looking for no more than 10 hikers who want to get strong and pain-free so they can conquer every adventure. If this sounds like you and you want to find out a bit more, shoot me a message to the Summit Strength page on Facebook or Instagram with the words, I'm interested. From there, we can have a chat and see if and how that the program might be a good fit for your goals and situation. So whether you have a big trip in your sights, or you want to finally make a change to your knee, back, foot, or ankle pain, or you simply want to be in a great physical position so you can be confident to jump into any adventure that you want, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Shoot me a message, we can have a chat, and we'll go from there. Hey, my name is Rowan Smith, and I want to welcome you to the Training for Trekking podcast. Now, this is the world's very first podcast, which is entirely dedicated to helping you train, prepare, and conquer your upcoming hike, trek, or mountain adventure. So once a week, I'm going to be giving you quality and practical information on the subjects of physical preparation for trekking, dealing with attitude, and nutrition on the trail, so you can know everything you need to be doing to have the best chance of a safe, enjoyable, and successful adventure. So now you know what you're in for, let's get into today's episode. So today we are talking about ankle pain for hikers, and specifically I'm going to be talking you through a few really common mistakes I see from hikers who struggle with all different types of ankle pain and discomfort, and sort of puts them at a bit of disadvantage into their long-term pain reduction. And these are things you may have done in the past, or you may potentially fall into in the future if you do have an ankle issue. So I'm going to be highlighting these areas and also what you can be doing instead. So mistake number one is solely relying on some type of boots, footwear, or even an ankle brace. Now, as I've talked about on the podcast multiple times, whether it's for knee pain, foot pain, ankle pain, or whatever it may be, relying on gear and using that as a one-stop solution is never a good idea. In the sense that if you are solely relying on something like this, you're not actually taking actions to help fix the actual issue or help make a change to the actual issue. And you're just putting a Band-Aid on top. And yes, getting your footwear right can be very, very beneficial for ankle pain. And absolutely, if you're aware that your shoes aren't doing you right or your boots aren't doing you right, I'd highly encourage you to search for a different um, different area. But if you're purely relying on this and or if you're putting 90% of your effort and your research and your, your thought into this to help with your ankle pain, it is not a smart idea. Yes, look at it, but it is not going to fix the issue. Now, on top of that point is there's often the argument in the world that, you know, with ankle pain is some people are fully for high top boots and some people are fully for, you know, very, very minimal support shoes. Now, the argument is the high top boots that's going to prevent, you know, ankles getting, you know, have an extra motion and it prevents you rolling over and actually getting uncomfortable. And the argument for the low, low cut shoes is like, look, if you're low cut shoes, you're actually teaching the ankle to strengthen up on itself. Now, let me tell you, neither argument is wrong and neither argument is 100% right. They both have their pros and they both have their negatives. But whatever works for you, find what you prefer, but don't purely rely on that. There are other other areas, which I'm going to explain in a minute, that you want to be focusing on. So that's point number one. Please do not make that mistake. Number two is when you are doing some type of exercises to help support your ankles, whether it's stretches, whether it's strength, strengthening exercises, whether it's uh, balance exercises or whatever it may be, please don't just focus on one area. Now, the reason I say this is a common story I hear is a hiker has an issue with their ankles and they go online, they go see a physio, they go post up in a Facebook group or whatever it may be. And they're like, how do I fix this? And many, many, many times they'll get a recommendation around one magic exercise, magic in quotation marks on on the podcast. Here we go. I'm actually doing it. But anyway, um, before I get out of track, 
is yet yeah, one magic exercise. And very, very, very rarely is one exercise going to fix the issue. Now, I was talking to a hiker the other day who came on one, one, of my, um, one of my programs and she was saying that, you know, she's had long reoccurring ankle issues. She went and saw a physical therapist and she was literally just given a balance exercise, one exercise to focus on and that was told was going to fix her. And in all honesty, no matter how good this one exercise may be and how appropriate it may be, it's really going to be a fix in itself. If you are struggling with ankle pain or discomfort, you want to be looking at four different areas. You want to be looking at specific ankle strengthening, which will look like little exercises for your ankles, which might be with a band. It might be, you know, walking on your feet, or it might be just those little intricate exercises to strengthen up the muscles around the ankles. You want to be looking at bigger strengthening exercises, which involve multiple joints, but still challenge the ankles. So things like step downs or single leg deadlifts or whatever, where you're strengthening up those muscles further up the chain, but also teaching the ankle to support yourself. You want to be looking at proprioception exercises or balance exercises, because nine times out of 10, if someone does have an ankle issue, you're probably going to get some benefit out of this. So that literally might involve standing on one leg or standing on a pillow or doing any other type of balance exercises. That is probably going to be beneficial. And number four is working on mobilizing the areas above and potentially below, below the issue. So if your ankles are giving you troubles, and your calves are super tight, then you probably want to spend a bit of time stretching out those calves or rolling those calves and giving them some relief. And down in the foot, you know, if the foot's really, really tight, maybe that might give you some uh, some benefit or not. And spending a bit of time doing a little bit of stretching or rolling or something may potentially help. I would say that's, um, that's a bit hit and miss, but definitely the calves if they are tight. So four areas, the ankles directly, the other muscles in the legs, proprioception, and, you know, a little bit of mobility work. And don't just focus on one area. Mistake number four is forgetting about fatigue management. Now, one of the biggest risk factors in pain in general for hikers is fatigue. Meaning as you're getting tired on the trail, as your muscles are getting tired, as you're getting fatigued, as you can't really think clearly or whatever it may be, that's automatically putting us at a high risk of pain. Doesn't mean we're going to get in pain automatically, but it's putting us at a higher risk of pain. On the other side of things with ankles, if we're talking about um, having missteps or rolling your ankle or whatever it may be, as you get tired, you don't really think and concentrate so much, meaning the unstable terrain is going to get a little bit harsher on you, meaning you might just take missteps, you might step on bad rocks, you might actually go over on your ankle or whatever it may be. But as a whole, if you are struggling with ankle pain and you're not taking your endurance or your cardio training seriously, as well as other fatigue management areas, you need to be looking at this. So if you are just going out hiking on the weekends and that's all the cardio you're doing each week, you probably want to fit something else in. So when you're going out on your hikes, you're not getting so as tired. Or when you're actually on the trail, you want to make sure what can you do to make sure you're not getting out um, as tired towards the end. Are you eating enough? Are you hydrating enough? Are you sticking to a reasonable pace and all of this? And are you choosing trails that, you know, aren't going to absolutely stretch you? This is a super, super, super important area for ankle pain and discomfort, but it often gets neglected. So I'd highly, highly recommend you think about that. And then the final mistake I want to talk about today is just relying on painkillers or anti-inflammatories for pain management as itself. So quite often hikers that I talk to, they'll be like, look, you know, I went on a hike, my ankles got sore or my ankles always get sore. Um, and when I got home, you know, they were sore, they were aching, they were swelling up or whatever, whatever extent it may be. And they're like, look, I just had some painkillers and it dealt with it and it got better after a couple of days. Now, there's nothing wrong with pain management if that's something you want to do and there's not like, you know, having issues with that. I'm not saying don't do that, but you should be looking at other strategies as well to help through the recovery and to help with your pain management because solely just relying on that again and again and again and again, I think you could be doing better personally. Now, one really simple way to help with pain management and help with recovery if you are getting sore ankles is doing something that's called contrast bathing, which I love for my clients. And we all know, or we've all done at one stage, we've used ice or cold for management of, you know, discomfort or pain. And it usually sort of numbs the area, makes you feel good. You know, some people argue it helps with recovery. Some people argue it doesn't, whatever. It doesn't matter. We all know it feels good. 
On the other side of things, we've probably all done um, heat therapy before, where we use like you know, Denka rub or warm bath or whatever it may be, and that also feels good. Now, either of those both work in certain situations and they can be beneficial in certain situations, and we've all sort of gone down that route. But there's a really cool um, thing called contrast therapy in which we literally combine them both and we alternate between hot and cold and essentially it's sort of a little bit better than, you know, the sum of two parts and it will be great for pain relief and it's theorized that it can be good for recovery and it's theorized it can be good for um, longer term, you know, slight, very, very small adaptations to help the healing process. It's theorized. Who knows if it works or not, but it's something that doesn't cost you any money, barely requires any effort and it's probably worthwhile going uh, using. And as I said, you know, it definitely helps with pain management. So what this involves is literally just getting a couple of buckets, having them in the house, um, filling one bucket with relatively warm, hot water, something you can tolerate, filling one bucket with either ice or, you know, icy water, again, whatever you can tolerate, and just alternating. Spend two minutes in one, two minutes in another, or one minute in one, one minute in another. Do that for eight minutes, 10 minutes after a hike in the evening. That in itself, super, super beneficial. If you wake up the next day, do the same thing. Super, super beneficial. And that, you know, it can be a little bit, um, you know, it might be a little bit more beneficial than just relying on painkillers or any inflams by themselves. So if you are struggling with ankle pain or ankle discomfort with your hiking, hopefully now you sort of got a bit of an idea around a few areas which you may or may not be doing. Try not to solely rely on boots or footwear or whatever it may be. Yes, it is important, but it is not the magic fix that a lot of people say. Number two, when looking at exercises, you know, don't just focus on one area. So don't just focus on balance or don't just focus on banded exercises or don't just focus on this. Make sure you're getting a spread of everything. Don't forget about the fatigue management and don't just rely on painkillers. And then the final thing, which I almost forgot to bring up is please, if you are going through this and you are dealing with ankle pain or discomfort and you've been doing exercises, you've been looking after yourself and it gets to the stage where you're feeling comfortable and your ankles have made a change, please don't stop. So many times that I hear this story of people get out of pain, they do the exercises, they do the rehab or whatever it may be, they stop, they're good for a month or so, and then it comes back. And it's a recurring, recurring, recurring cycle. If you are struggling with ankle pain and discomfort, and if you find exercises that work for you, turn into a regular thing. Keep it going even when you're pain-free. You might progress it. You might make it more difficult. You might make it more exciting, whatever it may be, but keep the general essence of it going because over the long term, prevention is always better than cure, almost always better than cure, and I really, really do hope you get around that. So if you do struggle with ankle pain, get around those tips, avoid those mistakes, and I really do think it will make a difference for you. Now, if you do struggle with ankle pain and or discomfort or really any other ache or pain that holds you back with your hiking, now, I would absolutely love to hear from you after today's episode. Now, if you haven't heard already, I am taking enrollments for my signature program, the Online Summit Program, and I'm looking for hikers who want to make a change to their pain, to their strength, to their fitness, to get in the best physical position for their adventures. So if you do struggle with ankle pain or knee or foot pain, if you do want to get fit for a particular adventure coming up, or you have just a big season of hiking coming around the corner and you want to be in the best position for that, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Find the Summit Strength page on Facebook or Instagram, flick me a message with the words, I'm interested, then we can have a bit of a chat about it all. I can talk you through how the program works. We can see you know, if the program might be a good fit for your particular goals, your particular situation, and we can go from there. So if you do need help, if you want to make a change, don't hesitate, reach out, and I'll absolutely love to chat with you. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.